Hello everybody. Our next camera is a Petri Color 35E. It was made in Tokyo in either 1970 or 1971. Not sure how long they were made. Um, apparently the earliest revs had one strap loop instead of the two. Reviews kind of love to hate on this camera because it's not the Color 35. Um, people love the color 35. They say it's what the Rolly 35 should have been because it's small, compact, retractable lens. Um, but then it doesn't have the weirdnesses of the Rolly, like the flash on the bottom. But if you take this camera, the 35E, for what it is, an early automated point and shoot, it's a nice little camera. It's zone focus. Um, has a sharp coated 40 millimeter f2.8 Petri lens. The lens focuses from a meter, about three and a half feet, or a little over three feet rather, to infinity. Uh, has click stops at one, one and a half, three, and infinity. <clears throat> it's got the usual icons, and then it also spells out the uh, the distances. But the lens retracts. It's a simple uh, push-pull mechanism. It's four elements in three groups. Pretty sure it stops down to F22. That's the spec for the manually settable Color 35. And doing a little math with the uh, guide number settings and the flash, it works out uh, to F22. The shutter is just okay. Uh, it goes from 30th of a second to 1 200th of a second. And there's no bulb, although there is a cable release in the shutter button. Exposure is fully automatic, aperture priority. Uses a cadmium sulfide sensor, originally powered by a 1.3 volt mercury battery. I put in the uh, Zinc Air hearing aid battery, 1.4 volts. Seems to meter okay. The sensor window is inside the filter ring. It's 40.5 millimeters. Uh, the only exposure indication is a red flag that comes up in the viewfinder if the light is too low for f2.8 at a 30th of a second or too bright for f22 at 1 200th of a second. It also comes up if you try to press the shutter and you haven't uh, extended the lens. There's, it doesn't do correction, but there's a mark for parallax when you're shooting closer than uh, 3 meters, or about 10 feet. Okay, I'm back. I had to have a sneezing fit. Got allergies or a springtime cold. I'm not sure which yet. Um, you can get a little bit of exposure control by monkeying uh, with the film speed. And you set it with this dial around the rewind knob. Uh, it goes from ISO 25 to 500. So you've got a little bit of little bit of room for uh, you know exposure compensation. Um, you can also take the camera off of this EE setting uh, here on the bottom of the lens. That normally it stays on EE, and the camera sets the aperture and the shutter. You take it off, and then uh, it's using the guide number system built into the camera. That limits you to a thirtieth of a second and you'd have to make a chart of the guide numbers and distances to see exactly which setting um, is going to get you a specific aperture. If I get, ever get some of this free time I keep hearing about, I might try and make a chart and put it over in the blog. There's a separate window here above the lens and button for the battery check. The manual refers to red and blue colors in the, in the battery check window. I don't know if mine's faded or if it fell off, but I don't really have colors. It does have a working needle, and so battery check does work. I just don't get the nice color coding. Um, and I'll show you why battery check is really important with this camera in a sec. To load film, you unlock the back. It's a nice little twist lock dealy here. And then you pull the, the camera back down and off. And then there's the battery compartment. You'd have to ruin the exposed portion of a film if to replace the battery if it goes dead while you're shooting. So with auto exposure only, without a battery, 
you're kind of out of luck if it goes dead. Flip down the pressure plate, put your film canister in on this side, pull the leader across, and then it's got a really nice uh, take-up spool. You just insert the leader into the wide part of the slot and then move it down to where it's narrow and it grabs the film. It's a really nice design. Uh, just check that you're engaging the sprocket here and reverse the steps to close it up. So film loading is pretty much a snap. It's just got that one gotcha if your battery goes dead. Uh, rewind is pretty conventional. It's got a release button here and then a flip up knob. So that's pretty normal. It has a flashmatic type uh, flash setting. You set the guide number when you take this thing off of EE and then changing the distance on the lens sets your aperture. So you got to have your, uh, your film speed uh, pretty accurate and know the guide number of your flash. And these colors here, uh, it's got kind of a gold, yellow, uh, green, blue, and red. Um, they match these scales on the focusing ring. Uh, it does have a hot shoe, also has a PC cord socket. That's about it for this guy. Um, pull out the lens, set an approximate distance, and take the picture. Um, my first test roll was a little bit weird. Apparently I had grabbed this um, and I taped it up, not really realizing that the light seals were good, and shot a roll of color film. And I kind of rediscovered the camera. I was going to shoot with it, and I saw, wait a minute, this is taped up. This isn't found film. This is my film. So I did, had no idea what was in it. So I've been reading that you could do C41 in black and white chemicals. I hadn't seen examples, and I hadn't done it. So I did it, and it actually came out pretty good. And then I ran another roll through it, uh, some pretty crummy uh, C41 color print film, and had it processed properly. I like it. It takes sharp pictures. You know, it's tiny. Uh, I think I probably like this a little bit better than the Rolly that I had. So I may take this guy out for a spin with some proper black and white in it, and I'll see you then.